Friday of the second week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Saul took 3,000 picked men from all Israel and went in search of David and his men in the direction of the wild goat crags. When he came to the sheepfolds along the way, he found a cave which he entered to relieve himself. David and his men were occupying the inmost recesses of the cave. David's servants said to him, This is the day of which the Lord said to you, I will deliver your enemy into your grasp. Do with him as you see fit. So David moved up and stealthily cut off an end of Saul's mantle. Afterward, however, David regretted that he had cut off an end of Saul's mantle. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, as to lay a hand on him, for he is the Lord's anointed. With these words, David restrained his men and would not permit them to attack Saul. Saul then left the cave and went on his way. David also stepped out of the cave, calling to Saul, My Lord, the king. When Saul looked back, David bowed to the ground in homage and asked Saul, Why do you listen to those who say, David is trying to harm you? You see for yourself today that the Lord just now delivered you into my grasp in the cave. I had some thought of killing you, but I took pity on you instead. I decided I will not raise a hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed and a father to me. Look here at this end of your mantle, which I hold. Since I cut off an end of your mantle and did not kill you, see and be convinced that I plan no harm and no rebellion. I have done you no wrong, though you are hunting me down to take my life. The Lord will judge between me and you, and the Lord will exact justice from you in my case. I shall not touch you. The old proverb says, From the wicked comes forth wickedness, so I will take no action against you. Against whom are you on campaign, O king of Israel? Whom are you pursuing? A dead dog or a single flea? The Lord will be the judge. He will decide between me and you. May he see this and take my part and grant me justice beyond your reach. When David finished saying these things to Saul, Saul answered, Is that your voice, my son David? And Saul wept aloud. Saul then said to David, You are in the right rather than I. You have treated me generously while I have done you harm. Great is the generosity you showed me today when the Lord delivered me into your grasp and you did not kill me. For if a man meets his enemy... Does he send him away unharmed? May the Lord reward you generously for what you have done this day. And now I know that you shall surely be king and that sovereignty over Israel shall come into your possession. The word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm The response is, Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. For in you I take refuge, in the shadow of your wings I take refuge, till harm pass by. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. I call to God the Most High, to God my benefactor. May he send from heaven and save me. May he make those a reproach who trample upon me. May God send his mercy and his faithfulness. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. Be exalted above the heavens, O God. Above all the earth be your glory, for your mercy towers to the heavens and your faithfulness to the skies. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus went up the mountain and summoned those whom he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve whom he also named apostles, that they might be with him, and he might send them forth to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. He appointed the twelve, Simon, whom he named Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, whom he named Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder, Andrew, 
Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. The Gospel of the Lord. The first reading comes from 1 Samuel 24, 3-21. The murderous plot of Saul against David has reached the point where he chases David and his followers out into the desert, bringing 3,000 troops along so that he might wipe them all out. Well, Saul goes into a cave which is inhabited by David and his followers, and he's gone into the cave to relieve himself. That it wasn't appropriate for a king to go to the bathroom in front of his troops. While he's in the cave, David sneaks up and cuts off the mantle of his cloak. He could have easily killed him, but it is very important that David not harm in any way the anointed one. Now part of this is simply respect for God's choice of Saul as king. Part of it is an apology of that no harm be done against any anointed one, which would include David himself. David proves himself more just than Saul was. Saul is trying to kill an innocent man. David has, in a sense, pardoned a guilty man. And Saul recognizes his fault. But that doesn't stop the plots of Saul against David. He'll continue to try to kill him. The Gospel is from Mark 3, 13 to 19. Jesus calls the twelve and names them apostles. Now the term apostle means envoy, someone who is sent. And so in a sense, these are ambassadors. And it's a standard name of the twelve. Simon was called Peter. Remember, Simon was his original name. He receives the name Peter when he begins to follow Jesus. Andrew, his brother, James and John, who are called the Sons of Thunder. Now we're not really sure why they're given that nickname, Sons of Thunder. Were they loud? Were they boisterous? We're just not sure. Philip and Bartholomew. Now, Bartholomew is only mentioned in the Synoptic Gospels. In the Gospel of John, we hear about Nathaniel, and many people believe Nathaniel was Bartholomew, simply with a different name. Matthew, who's also called Levi in the other Gospels. Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, also called James the Lesser. Thaddeus, who's also called Judas in the other Gospels. Simon the Cananean, who's also called Simon the Zealot. Zealots were part of a political party which fought against the power of Rome, and then Judas Iscariot who betrays him. It's important that right from the call we hear that Judas Iscariot will betray Jesus so that we realize that when Jesus called Judas it wasn't a mistake. He did this on purpose. It was all part of God's greater plan. And may God bless us.